and they looked for a scientist who was a visionary chemist and also willing to overlook the ethical standards right. that most other people might feel they had to observe. And that's when they found this extraordinary figure who's the center of my book, Sidney Gottlieb. And let's go back to right after the war, because in this effort, they re recruit and whitewash through uh, what's called Operation Paperclip the, the, these uh, uh, war criminals who oversaw these medical experiments on whether it was in the concentration camps or in Manchuria in, uh, in with the, the Japan, Japanese occupied. Uh, but talk a little bit about those figures who are who are immediately whitewashed and brought into this effort. So Gottlieb's idea was that it, before you could find a way to insert a new mind into somebody's brain, you first had to find a way to blast away the mind that, that was in there. You had to destroy a human psyche and a human soul and a, a human body if you could. Where do we start? Who, who's already an expert on this? Oh, the doctors in the Nazi concentration camps and those that worked in the Japanese vivisection shop up in Manchuria. So rather than hang those people, we decided we would hire them. And they became the basis of the American mind and control I just want program. To insert, because it's in your book. And we got their research, the slides that had the human tissue, which, as you point out, in Japan, were often cut out of living human beings, you know. We had uh, a great excitement, actually, at the prospect of being able to find the results of lethal experiments. And the people who had conducted them became valued colleagues to the CIA doctors. So I found, in the course of researching my book, what I think might be the first CIA secret prison in this lovely chalet in Germany, which looks like it could be a bed and breakfast. The young uh, German businessman who owns it was very nice. He took me into the house, and he took me into the basement. And he said, these were the cells where CIA doctors working with their Nazi counterparts carried out experiments that were just the continuation right, right. of experiments that went on in the concentration camps. And he told me, the older people in this neighborhood all know what happened in this house. And they have told me that there are bodies buried in what used to be forests underneath what are now apartment blocks and shopping malls. Well, they had a term for them. They would take these figures. They call them expendables. Explain. This is uh, really an amazing word that they started to use. The people who they could torture to death, or they could experiment to death, were people that they called expendables. This is all over Europe and all over East Asia. They were people who were either suspected enemy agents or refugees with no known connections to anybody who might complain. In East Asia, many of them were captured North Korean prisoners of war. Uh, and on these people, uh, Sidney Gottlieb and the people who worked with him conducted the most extreme experiments on human beings that have ever been conducted by any officer or agency of the U.S. government. Now, explain what they did and what they were trying to achieve. So the goal was to find a way to destroy a human mind. Gottlieb set up two groups of projects, one in the United States and, and one abroad. In the U.S., he liked to experiment on prisoners. African-American. Most, most normally. In fact, that was the uh, uh, focus of one of the most bizarre experiments that he administered at a federal prison in Kentucky. Uh, the doctor who worked with him segregated seven African-American inmates and fed them triple doses of LSD every day for 77 days without telling them what it was or what might happen to them. So this was an effort to see if that kind of abuse could destroy a person's mind. And guess what? It can. It does. We have no idea what happened to those seven men. We don't know their names. All those records were destroyed.